from my perspective, it's really important to say one thing initially, which is how privileged I feel to stand alongside Pat and David this morning, um, to be bestowed with the honor of officially launching this International Declaration on Youth Mental Health. To the young people, be leaders. Be leaders in your community. Be leaders amongst a group of friends. Be leaders in your own life. And what they mean by that is that the social capital that actually comes from, from investing in young people from childhood right through. So these are some of the highlights uh, for me about some of the main problems of um, uh, current service structures for young people with mental health problems. Hello, it's great to be here today. I'm very excited to have an international conference here in Brighton. Um, and uh, what fantastic presentation so far. And I must say there is some real leadership and, um, and fantastic projects that we can learn from here in, in England, I think, um, and, and across the UK. Said, we don't like what it is that you're doing. Um, you're going to make our lives really difficult. You're creating demand for our services and we'd like you to stop it, please. And my response was, actually, the demand exists in the community. We're not creating demand. You can't meet the needs of your populations. So maybe some of its dangers. Yes, uh, I think... What are your thoughts about I that? I think it can be. I think there's always going to be dangers with, with the internet and social media because it's very hard to police. But I think it can also be a very powerful tool for good, especially with things like Twitter, like we've been using at this event. Maybe more potential for change than in any other time of life. I've come to think of emerging adulthood as, a, as potentially a critical period for resilience. And it's trying to get the balance now of letting her get on with it and keeping the distance, but keeping in touch, really. And she's managed to get herself a part-time job. So we're the essential stakeholder. We, we are in the best position to talk about our experiences and um, what it's like for young people, what technology young people are using. So we, we are there because we're important, we're a valuable part of this process. What does it look like to actually understand the world of a young person from a young person's perspective? Because if you don't believe that technology is important, then I think you're doing yourself a disservice as a professional. This is William Shakespeare, and uh, in The Winter's Tale, there's a quote, I would that there were no age between 10 and 23, but there is nothing in the between than getting wedges with child, wronging the ancient tree, stealing, fighting. It's <laughs> <laughs> Guys, tell us a little bit about your poster and what it means and where it's coming to. Okay, my name is Alana Donnelly. Hi, my name's Laura Caven. Hi, uh, my name is Sylvia Morgiasen. Um, so we're from the St Albans Youth Council. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Hamish Alka jones Okay, so this poster is based on... Um, what I want to do is basically build on the, the power and I think the sensitivity and sophistication that you saw in those first two talks about where young people are actually at and what they're actually going through and shift the focus to the theme of the conference, which is young people at the forefront of, of, of services. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Ian Beck with the Graham Beck Foundation, and I'm going to be co-chairing this uh, plenary session with my partner here, Aiden. Aiden, do you want to hey guys. introduce yourself? I'm Aiden Harrison. I grew up in a small town in Australia called Wagga Wagga. And so I've just gotten into youth mental health for about three years now through social innovation and entrepreneurship. So yeah, we're just here to welcome you and co-chair the session. Great, thanks, Aiden. Um, I just want to acknowledge that um, we're holding this meeting on the traditional lands of the Mohawk Nation and of the Algonquin people. And we respectfully honor them and their ancestors. <clears throat> So we've got a lot of people from a lot of different places in the room right now, and I'd just like to gauge where we're at. So if you're from our host country, Canada, can you stand up? Yeah. Cool, thank you. Uh, what about just south of Can Canada? Uh, America, stand up. Yeah. Self, guys. What about Africa? Anyone from Africa here? Oh, not many, cool. Um, Australia? Australian stand up? <laughs> Woo! Cool. Uh, Europe? Europe? <laughs> I don't know all the European countries, I'm sorry. All yeah, all the European countries. Now, I've heard wind that we've got someone from the Arctic here. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Sweet. So, we, yeah. Obviously, we've got a lot of people from a lot of different places here today and for tomorrow as well. 
And I just want to welcome you all here for what is going to be an amazing conference. So thank you for coming, and I hope you get as much out of it as I plan to. Bienvenue à tout le monde. J'espère que vous appréciez cette conférence et l'opportunité de rencontrer les personnes de presque tous les coins du de, de, monde qui sont passionnés de la santé mentale des jeunes. I want to welcome um, those of you from other countries to Canada. Um, it's fantastic to be able to host you here. And um, I also, I really want to thank everybody from the IAYMH for organizing this. It's a lot of work to produce a fast-paced and um, engaging conference. And, um, and we really appreciate the opportunity to host this in Canada here. And uh, as well, you know, this uh, sprang out of um, this initiative and this conference was really initiated by a group of Australians, particularly from Origin, and we're, we're very excited to have that can-do attitude from Australia come here to Canada. And um, so uh, I think this is going to be a great conference, and take advantage of the opportunity here to meet as many people as you can because there's, there's an incredible diversity of people here doing fantastic things. And um, so we, just before we get going, we've got a few housekeeping uh, things to go over. So could we have the, the slides, please? Um, yeah, we should probably be able to read this. Yeah. <laughs> You guys can see it. We don't need to tell you. Yeah. So just a, just a, a few things to note. The, um, there's a, a little wrinkle with the lunch, and that the lunch will actually be served in two places. Um, lunch for the, the delegates and people who, um, yeah, will be served in the Salon Urbain, in the Théâtre Maisonneuve, and I understand there'll be signs and people directing you. And... Um, those of you who are poster presenters or in marketplace exhibitors will be served lunch in the foyer just behind here. It's really important to go to the right place for lunch as well, okay? Yeah. Please, if you're not a poster presenter, make sure you take the walk to get to lunch. It'll be worth it, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. So we have a really big, we want to have a really big social media presence for this conference. So we encourage everyone to be tweeting, Facebooking, asking questions via Slido. So using the hashtag IAYMH2015, and if you don't have enough room in your tweets, IAYMH, but preferably add the 2015. Um, we'll be asking questions from Slido and Twitter on the stage when we have presenters at the end of the session. So if you're not comfortable standing up, please post your tweets ask you questions via online, and yeah, get tweets out there. There's also uh, support um, for anybody that needs it if they're uh, feeling a little bit uncomfortable or want to talk to someone, and uh, so please just visit the registration desk if, if uh, you'd like to, uh, to talk with someone. Okay. This is today's schedule. It's pretty straightforward, I think. You guys can read that. So we've got the conference opening right now. We're going to start the plenary at 9. Then you've got questions at 10. There'll be a tea and coffee break in the foyer out there. And then we'll have the concurrent sessions from then till sometime. <laughs> Probably until lunch. OK. I, I just want people to note that um, we have the um, Minister of Health and Social Services of Quebec, Dr. Gaetan Barrett, who we're very excited about, and he's going to address the conference at 1245 in this room. And so we'd really appreciate it if you made a special effort um, after the concurrent sessions to come here and hear the minister talk. We'd love to have a great turnout for the minister, and I think it would be a sign to the minister that uh, youth mental health is very important. So please come out. Sweet. Then there'll be lunch and poster sessions. Sweet. 
So we've got Wi-Fi here at the place des arts. <laughs> My French is not good. Sorry for butchering that sentence. Um, so you sign up by the PDA by VIP and the password's on the screen, PDAM1234. If you're over at the Hyatt for the concurrent streams, the Wi-Fi is IAYMH and the password is IAYMH 2015. If you haven't got the app, you should most definitely download it. It's a very helpful resource. It has a program. You can make a schedule in there, and you can ask questions via Slido through the app. Okay. So Slido is the Q&A tool that we'll be using. Um, if you've got the app, you can go into the question asking area, which will take you to the Slido. Or you can post your question online if you don't feel comfortable saying it with the microphone. And then the chairs of the session will be able to see it and may, we'll um, put your question on the screen to be asked by the presenters. Okay. So yeah, official hashtags, please use them very, very much. I will be having a speaker very soon to tell you more about the Twitter. The Twitter, wow. Um, <laughs> to teach you guys how to tweet. Okay. These are the fire procedures, and we'd appreciate it if everyone would read it. Um, the main thing to do if there is uh, any sort of problem is head for the soft T sign. That's the exit here, and uh, listen to the staff for the instructions. I, I just wanted to add as well is that um, there is translation service available from English to French um, for these main plenary sessions, and so I would assume that if you would like to avail yourself of that, go to the registration desk. Um, but um, all the talks for this conference will be in English because it's an international conference. Yeah. So yeah, welcome. Please have fun. Yeah, let's go. Woo! Great. Hey. So could we have the, uh, the speakers come up, please? Oh, we're actually uh, Can I introduce you? Well, we're going to do, uh, uh, Jane is going to come up. So, yeah. Cool. Do you want to introduce Yeah. Me? So first up, we're going to have Jane Burns the CEO of the Young and Well Cooperative Research Center from Australia, and a young member from that same organization, Emily Minyaka. Min Emily is also a psych nurse who graduated last year, and the Young and Well Cooperative Research Center does research work to connect young people with technology, resources, researches, and services online to improve their well-being through technology. So give it up for them, please. You need to introduce Spoken Heard, oh, nice. Oscar, <laughs> Jane, and Emily. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now we need the slides up. And hi, everybody. I'm Jane. Hi, guys. I'm Emily. So I'm the old one. And I'm Emily. <laughs> 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 and our, oh, great. Our job today is to inform you about how to use Twitter so that we can take this out to the whole world. And Aiden, Twitter, not the Twitter or the Facebook or the Instagram. Let's just clarify that with you, buddy. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so who in the audience uses Twitter? Okay, it looks like about 50%. Who doesn't? Okay, about 50, yay. So your job today is to connect with someone to help you learn how to use Twitter, and the people who use Twitter, your job is to teach those people how to use Twitter. What we're gonna do is a very quick segment on the power of Twitter and how you can use it to uh, create change. So, over cool. to you. Okay, so just briefly, guys, I am so passionate about Twitter and social media, mainly because, first of all, it was my gateway into this world, so into youth mental health about three years ago. Through a simple Facebook post, I then got involved in Young and Well, and here I am three years later eating croissants in Montreal, so it's not too bad. Um, also, now, <laughs> also now in my professional capacity as a mental health nurse, 
I use Twitter extensively, basically to network with nurses all over the world from the comfort of my bed, which is pretty amazing. Um, so, looking at the slide, first of all, it, Twitter allows you to really include your stakeholders into your conversation. So it's about being able to connect with the people and the organisations that are important to you and your organisation. Um, sorry, I've got a few notes here. It is. It allows you to do this in a really in a less formal capacity. So there's a lot more space for to be creative, um, and just a lot of room for open sharing and open disclosure, which is becoming more and more part of this conversation. Uh, secondly, it lets you really direct the conversation. So it lets you bring up things that are important to you, lets you have your voice heard in a really open forum. And you can also kind of shamelessly self-plug and self-promote, which we all like to do when we're networking because we've all got important things to say. Um, it lets you really expand your network and not only that, but expand your knowledge base. So there's been so many times when I've been scrolling through Twitter found an article and didn't even realise I, I was interested in that until I had a read and suddenly I've got a new interest. So it really just broadens your horizons in terms of what you're interested in and what, you, what your knowledge base is. And finally, it lets you amplify, amplify your message. So in my notes here, I've written in capitals, hello, I have something to say and this is it. And that's kind of what Twitter lets you do. So it lets me stand up here as a young person next to an incredibly amazing woman you're welcome. <laughs> and and say I didn't get her that, to say that. <laughs> no, no, that was off my own back. <laughs> and say that I do believe I have something important to say as a young person, and my voice is definitely worth being heard. Now, Twitter allows for open communication, open disclosure, and just a you know open movement and sharing of information. Of course, this comes with risks. And at the end of the day, just use your brains. Use your critical thinking. We're all intelligent people. Use your reflective thinking, just like you would if you were on the floor in clinical practice or in research. And just enjoy the fact that we live in an age where we can stand here and all be in the same room now. And also, as Jane will soon explain, be tweeting across the world and sharing everything that we're doing now with people in so many different countries, which is a very, very special thing. Okay, over to me. Over to you. Okay, where's Chris Gesling? Is he here? If he's not here, he's in lots of trouble because <laughs> he's given me, where is he? He's given me um, two, or he's given me one job and then Helen Coughlin's given me another job. But what I'm about to show you is the power of Twitter. And we put this slide deck together about four years ago and my job back then was to go in and train a group of professors, the majority of them over the age of 60, on the power of Twitter. Now, who's a, who's a footy fan, an AFL fan? All the Australians are gonna like yell really loudly. Go the Hawks! Who's a Dockers? Is anyone Dockers fan? My heart goes out to you as well, guys. <laughs> <laughs> who's not into sport at all? Okay, well, this slide is not gonna work for you, but just imagine, right? This is nothing at the moment. Just wait for it. This is the MCG, right? This is our great big football stadium where every year 100,000 people go along to cheer on their footy team. So if social media were the MCG, how quickly can we fill the MCG and allow 100,000 people to hear about the amazing work that's happening today in Montreal? Well, pretty quickly. So I did this one night. So if you were to tweet out by at your CRC, which is my organisation, I'd reach 10,500 followers. If you added me, 4,300, <laughs> not that many. Origin, 2,700. Reach Out Pro, who's here from Reach Out? Atari, not here yet. Professional Network, 2,500. IAYMH, 1,600. Job is to get this up today. Butterfly Foundation, which is our National Eating Disorders Collaboration, 18,800. Smiling Mind, 5,500. That's a great app for mindfulness therapy. Reach Out Oz, 29,200. Beyond Blue, 73,400. Headspace, 44,000. Michael Carr Gregg is a child psychologist, 10,700. And so we have filled the MCG literally in five minutes or maybe a little bit longer, depending on how quickly you can tweet. <laughs> yeah. 
So we've got a little list of who you should follow, but through Twitter, what you'll find is that you'll see people tweeting and you'll start to follow them and you will quickly build your network of collaboration, even if you have not met those people. And so the challenge then is to do it on Twitter and then to find that person within the conference and to connect. And I found that really amazing in Brighton. We ended up having a, a lunch with a group of young people who we connected over Twitter. It is amazingly powerful if you use it um, to connect and to share and to really think about how you can actually grow that network and create the conversation around it. Which brings me to how we use it and to the quest, which is my good friend Chris Gesling's brilliant idea, which he told me about last night. So if I get it wrong, don't tell me off afterwards. So basically what we want you to do is to sign up now. So get out your device, either your smartphone or your iPad. Navigate to twitter.com or download the app. So if, you're, if you don't know what you're doing and you're sitting next to someone who looks like they do, have a little conversation and ask them to help you. Anything you want to add? No? Okay, who's there? Who's not there yet? Who needs a little bit more time? Hands up. Who needs help? There's a lady there needing help. Can someone <laughs> run quickly? We have a convert. <laughs> Anyone else need help? Help, help. Okay, then enter your name, your email address, and a new password. And now is your chance to say hello world. So join in at your CRC or at IAYMH. And the hashtag, which is the thing that allows you to follow the conversations, youth mental health, and then hashtag IAYMH 2015. And that will keep you looped into all the conversations. And I know there's been a lot of um, Twittering happening? Mm. Tweeting happening. Yeah, going crazy on Twitter. So. so you can already see the power of the conversation. Can I just add as well, if you go up on your main homepage, go up to the top right-hand corner, there's a little magnifying glass. And if in there you type in IAYMH 2015, then you can just see all the tweets with the hashtag. So it makes it a little bit easier if you still haven't followed everyone and whatnot. You can just follow the hashtag itself. Hands up. Is anyone stuck? I think we have a tweeting audience. I think we do. Can we call them tweet audience? Uh, now we do. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so now to the quest. You have a quest. And the job of you over the next two days is to win this quest. And Chris is going to tell me I've got that all wrong. But basically, you'll get points for your quest. So. For your first um, quest, or for your first point, you'll get one point if you send a tweet. You'll get three points if you send a tweet that has some digital content, i.e. a photo. And then you'll get six points. I think I've got this wrong, but anyway, you get points. Just imagine you're getting lots of points. You get six points if you ask a question or if you tweet a video. So to take you to your very first quest, stand up, Helen Coghlan. Give the woman a round of applause. We saw her at the very beginning of the uh, conference video. Two years ago, we launched the Declaration on Youth Mental Health. The job and the first quest is to go to the wall, which is apparently outside. Pick up one of these things, but do not steal it. I've been <laughs> heavily informed not to take these away. Or write on your postcard, take a photo, and then send that out via a tweet. And the tweet is, as I said, IAYMH 2015 and hashtag YMH action. That is your first quest. At the end of the two days, you're meant to keep the tally of your own quests. Um, don't cheat. That's bad. It's not good. Not good for your mental health. The job is to then go and speak to, I think, to the wonderful Mr. Chris Gesling. And there are prizes. Yes. I think. We, I don't know if don't you know what they up. are yet, but they'll be amazing, so it's worth it. Yeah, amazing prizes. Amazing prizes. Compliments <laughs> of Karen Pinnell. <laughs> oh, Craig Hodges. Okay, so that is your job. <laughs> is anyone confused? Does anyone not know what they're doing with Twitter or Facebook or... I'm old, I don't know. Any in Instagram, Instagram. You can also be Instagramming as well with the hashtag... Um, well, Facebooking that might, that might with even the get hashtag. You 10 points. Maybe, Chris, 10 points for Instagram. It's a thing. Um... And Vine as well, if, if anyone's on Vine, you can also be, you know, Vining your little videos and whatnot. So all social media go nuts, basically, is the rule. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so to finish, 
follow the IYMH 2015 hashtag, be heard, stand up for young people, mental health, wellbeing, and have your photo taken with this thing. Yay. Cool. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you very guys. much. <laughs>So now we're going to welcome up Spoken Heard to do a performance. Spoken Heard is a collective of artists, entrepreneurs, and social innovators united by their passion for social change and community empowerment with a focus on holistic progression of the arts. Welcome them up, please, the round of applause. Hi. Hello. Jeez. How's everyone feeling? Yeah? Make some noise if you're feeling good in here today. Yeah? Okay. Me too. Me too. Uh, my name is Patrick Walters. Uh, I'm a member of Spoken Heard. I'm here with my, uh, my, uh, one of the members of my collective, uh, Jermaine Henry, who will be on stage in just a moment. But right now, I just want to welcome you to uh, the Spoken Heard experience. We'll be on stage for a bit, and uh, I'm very excited. What I need from you, though, is energy. So I want everybody to take a deep breath in, and then blow it really hard out. Okay. All right. So we're gonna get we're gonna get some we're gonna get some energy going. So let me see your hands. Rub your hands together. Ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, count with me. Five, four, three, two, one. Beautiful. Thank you all so much for your energy. All right, so uh, I'm a spoken word artist. I've been uh, performing professionally for about two and a half years, almost three years now. And um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself through uh, words. If you hear something, also, uh, the room's been pretty quiet for the most part, but if you hear something that really touches you while, we, while we're performing, I want to hear some snaps, some Rick Ross grunts, <laughs> stamps on your feet, stamp your feet, clap your hands, do the hokey pokey, whatever makes you feel happy. Um, so uh, we're going to do a little arts therapy here. When I die... I'll donate my body to science. They can cut me open and extract the ink from my veins, the smile in my eyes, and the inspiration in my feet and my hands. More difficult to exhume will be the poems that I hold in my heart as a part of what make me who I am. So while I am alive, I'll do it for them. Writing out my heart and little parts like art for you to try on, these scriptures and all my texts like the Priory of Sion, these words write me, I am nothing more than vessel. Etched and sketched the prophet test to tell you this is special. My performances are rebel chants I learned through disobedience, writing verses about verses. What an out-of-body experience, deliriously delivering drastic daily devotions, and I can master many metaphors, but I'm more concerned with emotions. That's why it is so important for me to understand everything that I spit, because if I ever put the rhyme before the reason, I might as well just quit. Still... I chase the finesse that is just beneath a soliloquy and pursue the Japanese river that runs through a haiku and try to fit 750 years into 14 lines of a sonnet. I am back pentameter for the amateurs because we're all just learning to be honest. We're all just learning to be honest. So let me stay up all night and agonize over two syllables. Let me shed no tears but cry my pain into a war ballad where love fights justice and only the reader wins. Let me spin sentences across the landscape of your mind and turn agronomy into astronomy as the sun and moon keep time. I want no sleep. I want no food. I want no kiss to bring sensation and like, unless I can take those things and make those things in, into poetic inspiration. Don't give me too much else to do, please. Just let me focus on these pages. Maybe my weathered palms can mold my imagination into a masterpiece. Maybe my words can save a life because they've saved mine so many times. I may be pouring my soul on the stage here before you is the only thing that's ever rhymed for me. This poetry is my life. 
So it won't end until I can finally break free from these fleshly bars. Then become as infinite as the universe and write more than these fleshly bars. I am freshly scarred from the evolution of this poem on my being. I stand before you, begging you to tell me what you're seeing. There must be some translucence in my vulnerability or an ability to enter trans and lose sense of self so I can write freely through this poetry and pour them all out of my heart as I know them. I'm so much more than my words, but I'm nothing more than a poem. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, um, Spoken Heard is a collective that's been around for almost five years now. We do a lot of amazing work in uh, Toronto, art reach, uh, arts education in schools, uh, mostly uh, elementary schools and high schools. And uh, Jermaine, who is the director of arts, is going to tell you a little bit more about that uh, while he performs. But uh, I'm just going to give you my final uh, little uh, gift. And then I'll bring Jermaine on stage. This poem is called Feel Something. We're all born wanting to feel, to reach out our hands and grasp more than just the cold air that has been so improperly introduced to us, we spend time, attention, blood, and love in the name of creating a feeling we can embrace. Something warm to replace the cold air we were just expected to get familiar with. Warm like the first, le the first time I learned I could pass my finger through an open flame without getting burnt. I was 11 years old, firebending. I then needed to know how slow my finger could go before the flame did the kind of things that flames are good at when you move too slowly through them. See, I wanted to feel. Even if it meant a little pain at the end, I wanted to feel a sting, feel fun, feel excitement, feel my finger touch the sun. I was convinced that as human beings, we cannot just exist. We have to feel. Shortly after that, I learned that you could all do the finger through the flame thing. I should have known you were all superheroes. I should have known that in a world where even the flowers want to feel the sun so badly that they can sprout from lava fields and turn desolate into decorate, that wanting to feel was always going to be the one thing we all shared. But sometimes, sometimes we don't feel like flowers touching the sun. Sometimes we wilt. Sometimes when you're far from flame, when your backbone is chained to the past, when you've already quit something but your body wants one last pill or puff or snort or injection, when you look into the mirror but your soul is too dark for reflection, I know that sometimes feeling pain is the only way to know you are living. When you have hurt yourself deeply but you aren't good at forgiving, take your right index finger. When it quickly through an open flame, when you pass through onto the other side, know that your life be more meaningful than dictionary, more dictionary than direction. More direction does not always equal more meaning, and you can even be lost as long as you are feeling good. And me, I get lost all the time. But this right here got me feeling good. This right here tonight, this is calm before storm. This is wedding vows through tears. This is facing your fears and conquering them. This is cheesecake in the summer. This is a kiss on the forehead from your lover. There'll be times when you'll be numb, when the very idea of happiness will feel like a cruel joke that hippies made up. You'll spit blood in the dirt and it will sting, and the wolves at your doorstep will sing for your soul to not waver. Mash your heel, heel into the ground, right where your blood made a splatter. Lift your feet up off the ground. You are infinite now when you finally feel something. Feel it so strongly that you pull the moon in towards you. You inhale it and then breathe it out a little brighter. Congratulations. You all just made the moon pass through the sun. Thank you. All right. I'm going to bring Jermaine up to the stage now. Thank you so much for your time. Director of Education for Spoken Heard, Jermaine Henry. Jeez. Wow, 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 wow. Hold on a second. So I, did, I got a couple of housekeeping, housekeepings to do real quick. Um, spoken Heard, our Twitter is spoke underscore n underscore heard, in case you want to tweet about us. Thank you. So my name is Jermaine Henry. I'm the director of education at Spoken Heard. And what we do is we use the arts to engage youth in expression for their mental health as well as 
really just to talk about the oppression that they're facing. Because to be real, especially in Toronto, we have a lot of marginalized communities. And for us, a lot of it is art that's be able to share our voice. So it, it's funny, in the tweet it said, um, in one of the instructions it says, be heard. And that's all what we're about, is being heard. Um, the other thing I wanted to share is where we at in levels at. Can I get a like, ooh, ooh. Can I get a ooh, ooh? Okay, 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 one more time, one more time. Can I get a ooh, ooh? Okay, okay, I appreciate that. Okay, so I got one quick story because I'm, I'm trying to actually drive back up to Toronto. We got a lot of gigs back there. So um, this week, I'm just speaking this to you because it's very important. This week, uh, I was going to work, do a facilitate workshop, and I'm coming off the bus, right? And this girl, this girl comes up to me, she's like, Jermaine? And I'm like, Jermaine. I look at her, and it's a girl that I worked at at a group home three years ago. Now, the work that I did with her was so intense. She was borderline personality, self-harmer. I, 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 there's a lot of things that she's going through. And I had the opportunity to be doing dialectical behavioral therapy with her. And one of the things I introduced to her was using art as a medium to cope. I'm talking to her. And she goes, you know what? I got into rap. I'm like, what? Mind you, she is one of those girls that looks like uh, from she's like from the Little House of the Prairie. You know what I mean? Like, and she plays the violin. She's a classical artist, and she's like, she's using rap. And to take it further than that, she's getting some high school credits, and she's taking French. We're in Montreal, so it's how fitting. And she actually is doing a project on art and psychology. And I'm like, wow. That's exactly what I do. So uh, I'm actually going to share with you a, a couple pieces. And uh, this, is my, this is for my first project called Preview My Perspective. And I really just invite you to just feel. You might not, it's rap, so you might not really catch every word and all that. That's OK. But just feel like, like my man Patrick was saying. So if I could have my sound man give me visions, and we're good. All right, are we ready? All right, so this is a little bit of my story. Okay, can I get some claps? Here we go. That's it. Check it. Yo. Check it. Yo. Coming out of school in May of 012. Degree in psychology. Wonder how it's gonna pay back. Sally May. I mean OSAP. ASAP was waiting for my visa to go back to the States for my mate. Mindset said, give her everything, time set, presidents over feelings. Divine intervention, my eye, my vision, camps and companies. You know, Jermaine, I went insane, obsessed with my dream. I believe, had to lead a wonderful queen. Was it worth it? Picture perfect, imperfect, imperfect, purpose, person, patience, perseverance. Upon this past, post grad, I'm on my path. Thank God, I realized my greatness, spoke it into existence, heard the call, now you made it. Check it. Da-da. That's all love. That's love. Can we, can we take the track off real quick? So I love that. Oh, give a round of applause real quick for everyone. We're here. You know what they told me? They told me, honestly, at these conferences, people are a little, you know, a little stiff, a little bit. It's not really that like, interactive. So they, they specifically said, they're like, honestly, guys, we need you to really engage them and, and really set the tone for this because we're really trying to have a great conference, you know? So I'm like, you know what? Hey, this is me. This is what I do. You know what I'm saying? So um, another part of my story is two years ago, I, I left my full-time job with benefits at a group home, um, actually not at a youth drop-in center and an outreach worker. And I just followed my bliss. I had my heart. I was like, yo, I'm going to full-time do this art and do this um, youth engagement, you know? So I joined Spoken Heard, 
And then I just built up the education program and we started doing projects in, uh, in Rexdale. We did a, a performance arts program where kids, man, the stories are amazing. So this next song that I'm going to show, show you is called Allow, Allow Your Bliss. And it's all about getting your peace of mind and, and what I had to do on my journey. All right, so um, let's do it. Allow the bliss. Let's see if you can sing with me. I'm going to, okay, so it goes, Allow your bliss, freedoms of risk, most death worth it, worth it. We're going to try it out. Allow the bliss, freedoms of risk, most death worth it. Get your hands up. Uh-huh. Uh, I lie the bliss, freedoms of risk, most death worth it, worth it. Try it. I lie the bliss, most death worth it, worth it. <laughs> I lie the bliss, freedoms of risk, most death worth it. Check it. All year been following my bliss, it's been a risk, most death worth it. Find my purpose, manifest as I catch my fist. Power to the people, Huey Newton. I shade all the greats, past, present, future things. Sage in my face, enchanting, enchanting. The feeling of beautiful moments feel like I was chosen. Like Moses and Abraham, a black man leading his fam. Building up a nation, God whispering. Take back what was stolen, redemption. Rethinking reality, a lot of frequencies to jubilee, be free. Kings and queens who manifest dreams, not new slaves. It's time for us to rule. Educate yourself. Don't get schooled. Yeah. Okay, I feel you, I feel you. Here we go, one more time. A lot of the bliss, freedom to risk, most death worth it, worth it. You got this one. A lot of the bliss, most death worth it. I heard you. One more. A lot of the bliss. Most death worth it, worth it. All right, this is a true story. Yo. Yo. I spent my last dollar on my dream. Now I'm trying not to blaspheme my own name while I wait for reality to manifest to what I see. Believe me, God's guided me, guided me. Energy, synergy, synchronicity, love frequency. One love free of G. What inspires me, I do this for my team. You before me, this philosophy. Even though it looks the opposite, I believe love covers everything. The gift and the curse, life in the hearse. Testing man on earth, have me question my worth. Systematic depravity, they try to falsely miseducate me. The truth shall reign. Free all new slaves, I proclaim in my name. So, I lie the bliss, freedom's a risk. Most death worth that, worth that. Allow the bliss, freedom to risk, most death worth it. All right, we got this one. Allow the bliss, most death worth it, worth it. Allow the bliss, freedom to risk, most death worth it. Yo, I appreciate y'all just being here. And I want to let you know that the best thing you can give to any young person is just be yourself and be real and actually connect with them. Because if you're going to come out here and just have a little assessments I know the assessments and just diagnose and it just be a very clinical thing it's not gonna happen young people these days we need just need to connect that's all we're looking for so I really appreciate everyone that's here appreciate the love you guys are just wave your hands clapping like this is a great crowd so give yourselves a hands applause all right all right one love Wasn't that great? Come on, one more. Round of applause for them. I got one more, one more. Uh, in case anyone wants to get in contact with us, I'm going to leave some of my cards right here. And you can check out spokenherd.ca. If you guys want to fly us to Australia or something like that, hey, we're down. You know what I'm saying? All right, appreciate you.